Let me be very honest with you guys, okay? Heavy is the hand that holds the billy club. I am tired. I am old. The absolute brainlets on the internet have zero chill. It's out of control. There's no way to keep up with the amount of stupidity. But I'm here. I'm reporting for duty. I've seen the DMs. I've seen the emails about this dude, FCK Joshi, and his moronic prank on the subway in New York just this past week. And I see no appropriate course of action that doesn't involve a good sticking because this dude is one stupid mother. Okay guys, change of plans. In that short intro break, I've decided we're actually gonna let cooler heads prevail on this one. We're gonna put the club aside and look at this like a normal human being. Uh, in addition to the unrelenting temperature of this garage office, because I haven't installed the AC yet and my high blood pressure, I think it's better for everybody that I don't die on camera just yet. Hello, Mr. Lush, et cetera, et cetera. I am a New Yorker and this person thought it was funny to pour milk and cereal all over a crowded subway train. It seems like a careless and selfish stunt that only hinders MTA workers from their job. This is one of many messages I've gotten this week about this dude, f Joshy. Self-proclaimed loser slash TikTok star with over 3 million followers got lambasted this week because uh, one of his many insensitive stunts uh, just didn't sit right with a lot of people in this current time. Take a look. I accidentally dropped a whole tub of cereal on the subway today. I was like, oh my God, this is the worst day of my life. Not my Fruity Pebbles. Everyone started moving away and filming me, but I was like, can someone help? Surprisingly, no one offered. So I had to put all the soggy cereal back in myself. Someone was like, I cannot believe Believe this is happening. I was like, I can't believe this is happening again. So people are big mad, rightly so. He's getting crushed in the comments. It gets picked up by TMZ, where they call him a TikTok moron. He even gets dragged by the Metropolitan Transit Authority on Twitter, where they say, a new low, pulling a prank on essential workers in the middle of a global pandemic and making essential workers clean up your mess. Despicable. Now, personally, I couldn't agree with the MTA anymore. However, my lack of surprise is immeasurable. This is the new world we live in, in the social media age. Things that 10 to 15 years ago would make zero sense to do are now becoming more and more common because you can get cheap clicks by being an asshole to people in public. In this case, essential workers traveling to and from work just trying to get through another difficult day during a pandemic, not to mention the other essential workers that have to clean up after this slob idiot. So like clockwork, he uploads an I'm sorry video to his YouTube channel. Everyone who's watching this video, dislike right now. I'm an idiot. I'm such a idiot. Which was an apology in quotes at best. And we're gonna look at that in just a few minutes. But let's turn the clock backwards for just a second to see how we got here. So out of his socials, TikTok is clearly his bread and butter where he's found his audience, which is no surprise because TikTok is always the place where the dumbest shit goes viral, right? He's got an Instagram, 59, almost 60,000 followers where he reposts some of the same stuff and it was only started just a few months ago. His YouTube was literally just four videos from several months ago that are him in a more street interview style of video where he's going up to random college students as they dump out of bars drunk and asking them edgy questions. Oh, and his I'm sorry video from yesterday. You hook up with any hot girls? Oh, I hooked up with two. One was like a six, the other one was like a seven and a half. Oh my goodness, that's that's a 14. Oh yeah, pretty much. So it looks like these street interviews is how he got his toes wet making content and on his TikTok, his earliest videos are just him pulling some highlight clips from those YouTube videos. What are hot girls doing this year for Valentine's Day? Pegging. I'm having sex on Valentine's Day. What's the highest you've ever gone for girls? Highest. Um, eight. Would you rather get every STD or hook up with Trump? Hemorrhoids are a serious condition. There's only so many times you can listen to obnoxious drunk girls talk about sex before your ears drums get AIDS. Maybe Joshy realized this quickly pivoted to a new style, a new format on TikTok and things really started to take off from there. Yo, what's up guys? It's Joshy. I didn't have time to have breakfast this morning, so I brought fruit to class and I also brought my smoothie maker. Everybody started staring at me and the professor said I couldn't do it anymore because it was apparently too loud. I was like, if I can't make a smoothie during class, I don't even want to be here anymore. So then I dropped out. Hey, what's up guys? It's Joshy. I was really bored in class today, so I started practicing for my intramural basketball game tonight. My professor got really mad and was all like, mm, you can't do that in here. I was like, I'm sorry. It's no days off. So I kept dribbling. Then she threatened to call campus police if I didn't stop. So I started practicing for my intramural tennis game. I'm going to be LeBron. So I dropped out. Hey guys, little editor's note here as I go through this video. I didn't run into this while I was recording this video. I was focused on the TikTok stuff, but it makes sense that Joshy has a bit of a failed career as a stand up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at a bar and this guy died. I was like, wait, what? That was the whole story? He was like, yeah, dude, you should have been there. I was like, what is wrong with you? Uh, thanks, guys.
And it looks like he got so desperate, he crashed a live Barstool Sports radio show where he went on to beg Dave Portnoy for a job. You are so far off my radar, radar right now. Like you're, right, you're no, making, no. you're doing decisions that are like mind-boggling to me. Okay. And it was pretty much just all the Barstool Sports guys just in disbelief that he was stupid enough to crash a live radio show. Anyways, back to it. Voicing over videos of himself doing random, strange, disruptive stuff in class at college. An absolute hit. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Joshy. I was in class today and I got real hungry, so I started making Easy Mac. My professor asked what I was doing and I was like having breakfast. He was like, well, if you didn't bring enough for everyone, you need to stop. I'm like, I actually did. Everyone can have one noodle. He then said if I didn't stop, I was going to get in trouble. I'm like, if I can't even enjoy some nice macaroni and cheese in class, then I'm going to go home and jack off. So this formula netted him a bunch of virals early on, so he just kept repeating it, being this cavalier dude doing some really random shit in class and then being like, ah, oh, if I can't do this, I'm going to drop out. So I understand the appeal here. I've watched through a bunch of these. Some of them are kind of funny. They're very random. He's got that, you know, don't give a fuck attitude, which a lot of people admire in their social media people. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Josh. I was still pretty high from last night. So during class today, I put on my microwave, found an outlet, and then started making popcorn. I asked my professor if he wanted some, and he said, sure. He was like, this is pretty good. I'm like, are you also high? I'm like, if you are, we should hang out sometime. We could smoke a Josh. He was like, I actually don't smoke. I'm like, do you jewel? He's like, no. I'm like, then this is very awkward. So then I dropped out. 27 million views on that one. People seem to love it. So he just continues to do it. I don't understand how many classes you can possibly drop out of. I, I imagine he's just showing up to classes he's not enrolled in maybe to film these. I don't know if there's any element of it being scripted or the teachers knowing what's going on. It seems relatively authentic, but here's one of him with the big cereal bowl, which we're a little familiar with now from the Subway video. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Josh. I was still pretty shit-faced from last night, so today during class, I took out some cereal and started munching away. Apparently, it was really distracting, though, because my professor was like, Josh, what are you doing? I'm like, how do you know my name? This is literally my first time in class. So one thing this dude does is make a lot of videos. He's been doing daily. Sometimes he'll upload multiple TikToks a day, so he's hustling hard, obviously, and a lot of it's just random, makes no sense. There's not really any punchline. It's just like, how stupid, how random can I possibly be? Yo, what's up, guys? It's Joshy. I decided I was going to be a good student, so I went to the library. When I realized how much work I had, I realized I needed to eat, sleep, and breathe the library. So I started moving all my belongings in. After studying for five minutes, though, I officially declared it the worst day of my life. I don't know how anyone does this shit. So as he continues to grow, obviously things have to move outside of the classroom at some point. So he starts doing more things in public. After getting kicked out of McDonald's for having a pet chicken, I went to Subway and asked if they could cook him up and put him on a foot long. The guy was like, cook what up? I'm like, my chicken. He was like, holy shit, what is that? I'm like, I just told you, a chicken. Then they tried to give me some bull about how they don't cook chickens in the store anymore. So I went behind the counter to see if they were telling the truth. Turns out they were. And now the Board of Health is shutting down that location. <laughs> no. Now I know at this point you're thinking, Leon, did you just cut the camera and go jump in a pool? and come back. No, I wish. It's actually just a thousand degrees in here. I'm I'm fully soaked. I got an HVAC guy coming next week to get an AC quote. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're struggling through you it. You guys ever walk up the stairs to an attic and just get hit in the face by a wall of hot, dense heat and humidity? This is, th that's what I'm in right now. I'm in that and I'm dying. So we scroll up a little bit and at this point, quarantine begins, right? And what better way to fuck with people than when they're already living in a world of fear because of a global pandemic? I was really high in Target today. So I pulled a frozen pizza off the shelf, then went to the appliance section, grabbed a microwave and started getting weird. An employee got mad because I didn't pay for anything. I was like, well, how am I supposed to know if I like the pizza if I can't try it? So then he started talking into his intercom and saying he needs security because there's another homeless man making pizza in aisle three. I'm like, who are you calling homeless? I live with my parents. I couldn't find a mask today, so I made one out of condoms and an iPhone charger. This guy stopped me and was like, whoa, what's going on here? I'm like, nothing. He's like, if you want to be in the store, you need to be wearing a mask. So then I took it off and he was like, is that a used condom? I'm like, trust me, that's the last time I go to a bar mitzvah high. My friend and I were in the middle of a very intense Monopoly game and I was bringing it to his house so we could finish, but I didn't have a car, so I had to bring it on the subway. I was like, it's not gonna flip over. It's not gonna flip over. It's not gonna, oh shit. I was like, no, I had a hotel on boardwalk. Then this guy helped me pick everything up. So I gave him a 100 Monopoly bill and told him he never had to ride the subway again. So here we can see he's dipping his toes and fucking around on the subway. And you know, we obviously know where that ends up, but uh, I wouldn't even be as mad if it was like a, just a little bit funnier there was like some sort of punchline or something but just relentless this kid but everyone i talked to kept worrying about it i was like y'all are messed up i bet if this mannequin was white you wouldn't be judging me
I'm very self-conscious about my weight, but I love Mickey D's, so I brought my scale today. So we get the picture. It looks like it started with the street interviews. He found this formula of this voiceover of just kind of being a random, weird kind of dickhead that has slowly escalated over the months uh, and kind of culminated in this most recent video of the Subway cereal spill that garnered him a bunch of criticism, rightly so. Now, he seems like the type of dude who just is missing that part of his brain where he gives a shit, right? You're not gonna like write a mean comment that gets to him and he's not gonna get bullied off the internet for being a dick. He's probably actually reveling in the hate, if I had to imagine. You can kind of get a sense of that when you watch his I'm sorry video. Everyone who's watching this video, dislike right now. I'm an idiot. I'm such a fing idiot. I would like to apologize to the MTA, the essential workers, everyone that I have affected. Trust me, I am experiencing the consequences of all of my actions right now. You have probably seen the, the serial on the subway video. I accidentally dropped a whole tub. Probably the stupidest person of all time. I deserve to be public enemy number one. I wish you were here right now to slap me in the face. Incredibly self-deprecating right off the bat, which is right on brand for him anyways. Just, oh, I'm the worst person in the world. I'm an idiot, don't follow me type of bullshit. Doesn't really seem sincere, not to mention, every single possibility to rep his own brand, back of his laptop, shirt, decal on the wall. Then he gets into the reason for making the video. The reason why I wanna do this video is because I want you guys to know that I am reading your comments and I am genuinely taking in what you have said to me. A lot of people have made comments on my Instagram, on YouTube, you know, on TikTok, and now I'm going to read um, 50 of the most hateful comments about me online. So now he's just being a smug asshole while he says I'm really taking your comments to heart and he's going to go on to read 50 of the most mean comments which obviously reading mean comments can be a fun thing to do if you're not issuing an apology video if it's actually sincere comment 50 just saying if i were on that train car and even a drop got on me they'd find a vaccine for the virus before they found all his body parts the combination of stupidity and gal is almost admirable my cousin is a police officer in new york and he says you're cheeks are gonna be red real soon. Guys, once again, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just want you to know that I am reading your comments and everything you guys are saying is hitting me personally. So he reads all 50 comments. Doesn't seem like there's a sincere bone in his body, probably just reveling in this added attention, I have to imagine. And that's just the reality of how some people are, I guess. He just doesn't seem to possess that part of your brain that harbors any sort of consideration for anyone but himself. I don't know if that's a product of his upbringing or if he had some traumatic brain injury that busted up his frontal lobe, but when you have someone that has a complete void of empathy for other people and you give them a cell phone, this is the type of shit you get. There is an element of creativity to what he does. It's not just, oh, let's go into Walmart and steal something like the lowest of the low on social media, but his complete disregard for everyday people makes him a completely selfish loser. Especially his aggressive behavior towards people that are already suffering a massive loss during this pandemic, just making their lives more difficult. I think this is just who this dude is, and he's found an audience of edgy 13 year olds that think he's hilarious. And I imagine that no amount of attention in the world is gonna fill the void that was left by the lack of love he received from his parents growing up. But you know, if he's lucky, he's savoring these few hits of dopamine he's getting before he spirals into a relentless depression that's gonna creep in once the attention from being a dickhead no longer fills the void. Social media is a double-edged sword. It can bring you to the highest of highs, but it can just as quickly turn around and pummel you into the ground and deliver you your lowest low. And that can be a dangerous place to be when you don't have a solid foundation to lean on when your entire self-worth is wrapped up in these online numbers and this validation from strangers. By the way, I stopped at Joshi's website to check out his merch and uh, he's got a couple other neat perks you can get on here. You can do a, a private online meet and greet with Joshi himself for $100 where you get um, 15 minutes on Google Hangouts with Joshi where he'll answer some of your questions. So that's a uh, $400 an hour valuation uh, for Joshi's time. And if if you just can't get enough of Josh, you can get your very own personalized 20 second video shout out for $35, which is a valuation of $6,300 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Joshy must be a little bit cooler than I thought if he's able to command that type of money uh, from his fans. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be kind to people you don't know. There are so many fucking ways to make money and build an audience and, and make people laugh without having to be a dickhead to unassuming everyday people that don't know any better. I would appreciate it if you don't bully me in the comments for being a human sauna right now. If you could feel how fucking hot and muggy it is in this office, you would start a GoFundMe me for my funeral. Be sure to subscribe and hit thrust that motherfucking like button for me. Love you to death. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.